Hello, welcome to New Harvest Christian Fellowship, Manchester, England, and thank you for subscribing to our sermon podcast. The message you're about to hear was recorded live at one of our recent services. We pray it will be a blessing to your life, and if you'd like to get in touch with us, we'll give you our contact information at the end of the recording. Thank you once again. Enjoy the preaching. Thank you, Pastor. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. Praise God. Amen. You can go ahead this morning and be seated. I'm glad when Pastor invited us to the spot, when he shouted out and said, meet us at the spot, that you took up the invitation and you're at the spot. And I want to tell you, those that are at the spot this morning are going to, God is going to minister to us as we, you know, gather at the spot this morning to hear from the Lord. I want to speak to you this morning, um, and I've entitled this, um, Taking Back Control. Taking Back Control. Um, Proverbs chapter 25 and verse 28, the Word of God says there, whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. Let me read that again. Whoever has no rule over his own, sit, uh, his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. It's very important this morning that you and I have to take control of situations in our lives. And sometimes we can take or want to take control of things that you know, we don't necessarily have to be in control of. I, you know, I, there was a time that I was struggling a bit with driving, and I, my daughter said, you know, I, I'll, I'll drive. And uh, I, I was sort of scared. I was like, man, she's going to take control of uh, the driving. And, uh, and her sister said that she was actually on the bus, and uh, she was going along, and the driver was going, and he had to swerve, and he said, look at that idiot out there, that driver. And she looked out and she realized it was her sister that was driving. (laughs) So when she said she was going to take control of the car and she was going to drive, I was a bit worried, you know, and I was like concerned. And I remember actually trying to be calm and not to panic her or anything like that. And I was just trying to be calm. and, 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 And inside, all I kept saying was, you're too near the curb. You're too near the curb. You're too near that car. You're too near. You're going too fast. You're coming to a roundabout. And, and, and this leg, I don't know what, but this leg kept coming up like I was trying to press on the brakes. So this leg just kept coming up, and I was struggling to, to keep it down. And, uh, and, and at the end of the journey, I said, hey, you know, I was good, you know, I, because we got there. And she says, Dad, I knew you were, you were panicking. <laughs> I knew you, weren't, uh, you, you were worried. This, you know, but there are areas, and sometimes we want to be in control. And it's nothing wrong with someone else driving the car. Or maybe there's a job that you do, and there are other people that can learn that job. And, and what happens is that we take control of that, and we don't want anyone else There are guys that I work with and I say, you know, can you train this person how to do this job? And they'll say, I'm not training them. And the reason why they're not training them is because they want to be in control of that job that they're doing. And they don't want anyone else to take control. And I I was, and I says, hey, look, you know, someone else trained you. Why don't you train this person? Why don't you help them? Why? And, oh, no, I'm not helping them. I'm not doing it. I don't want to work with them. And what happens is that we're, we want to take control of things in our lives, and we want to be totally in control of every area. And sometimes those people can be of help to us, but we want to take control of that. If we are honest as men, there are times in our lives when we have simply lost it. When we have simply lost control. And there's three areas this morning that I want to look at that we can lose control. There are many areas 
where we can lose control. But there are three areas this morning that I want to look at. And one is sexually, we can lose control. Mentally and spiritually, we can lose control. As men of God, we need what the King James translation calls temperance. We need, we need self-control. We need restraint in our lives. We need to be able to control ourselves. And we need to take back control of those areas in our lives where we've lost control. Self-control helps us to regulate how we behave. And it helps us to reach the goal that we need to, uh, you know, to reach, as it were. And, and that's something that is very important in our lives, that we would have self-control. That you might reach the goal, there are plans and, and strategies, there's things that we have that we're planning for our lives. But without self-control, we will never reach those goals that we need to reach. We can't afford to live lives of reckless lives, as it were. You know, it's like a vehicle out of control. We can't afford to live reckless lives. We need to make sure that we are in control of issues and things in our lives. That means taking control of our responsibility. As men, we have God-given responsibilities. If you're married here this morning, let me say that you have a responsibility as a husband. If you have children, then you have responsibility as a father. You need to take control of responsibilities in our lives. We're constantly faced with temptation and we have to take control. We have to take control when you and I are faced with temptation. One of the biggest things in taking back control or taking control is taking control of your borders. And this morning, if your walls are down, if your walls are down, the enemy is going to come in and steal. You, you have your borders, uh, you are not protected as it were. You know, if you have your fence, if, you know, tonight there will be strong winds. Let me say, if, if your walls or your fence got blown down, then you need to put it back up. Because what happens is that your property won't be protected. And the same way with our lives, if, if the walls are down, then the enemy is going to come in and destroy us. We need a man to check. We need checkpoints on our borders. How many know that? We need checkpoints. We need to check what is coming in. We need to make sure we know what is coming in, and we need to make sure we know what is going out. First thing, as I said, I want to look at is we need to take control of sexual temptations. We need to take control of, the, of those areas where the enemy would come and tempt us. 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 18, the word of God says, Flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does is outside the body. But he who commits sexual immorality or sexual sin, he sins against his own body. You see, what happens is that Paul didn't say to endure temptation. He says we need to endure trials, but we need to flee temptation. You see, what happens is that if someone is flirting with you, you don't stay there and say, well, you know what, I'm just enduring this temptation that I'm facing you know, I'm just going to go through it. Uh, I'm going to endure this temptation. Let me just stay here. I've got to go through it. No, he says flee temptation. He says, you know, we endure, you know, the battle, hardship as a good soldier. We, we endure those things. But when it comes to temptation, Paul says flee. Flee temptation. Run away. Get away from it. 
If you are watching a film and uh, suddenly the scenes change and uh, there's things that come on that you shouldn't be watching, then we have to flick over. We can't sit there and say, well, you know what? I've just got to endure this temptation. I've just got to go through it. No, we can change the channel. We can switch it off. We can flee those temptations. If you've lost control or feel that you're losing control this morning, then we need to get back. We need to, uh, you know, we need to take back control of those areas of our lives. It's easy for us to lose it. It's so easy. It only takes a few seconds for us to lose it. But we need to take back control. We need to understand and know what we're thinking. You know, have you, ever, have you ever said to yourself, what am I thinking? We need self-control. You know, what am I thinking? We need to make sure that our thinking is right. We need to make sure that the words that we speak are right. We, we can get involved in conversations that are ungodly as it were. We need to be, uh, you know, make sure what we are hearing or what we're looking at, we need to take control. Self-awareness is very good because it helps you and I to know when we're losing control. When we're aware of what we're doing, when we're aware of the decisions and the plans that we're making, when we're going wrong, we'll be able to see that. Why? Because we have self-awareness and that's something that is necessary for every Christian as we become more self-aware we will see when we're stepping over the border when we're getting off off track as it were when God when we're doing things that God tells us not to do then we'll be able to come back on track Psalm 51 and verse 10 says create in me a clean heart O God And renew a steadfast spirit. And one translation says, a right spirit within me. We need a clean hearts and right spirit. Clean hearts and right spirit. How do you develop clean hearts and a right spirit? The way we develop a clean heart and a right spirit is by reading the word of God, by praying, by getting close to God... And then we will develop that clean heart and that right spirit. And it's very important this morning that we develop that clean heart and right spirit. Clean heart and right spirit that would be in us. Secondly, mentally, we need to take back control. 2 Timothy chapter 1 and verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear but of power and of love and of a sound mind. We need to have a sound mind. God wants us to have a sound mind. But how many know that sometimes we lose it? And you know, the evidence of us losing it, you know, and I hope this doesn't happen, but probably holes in the walls or in the doors. You know, you've lost it. Or maybe your kids are curling up in the corner and scared of you. And as Pastor said on Sunday, don't know which you is going to come home and how you're going to react and and how they should react. Oh, we can't say anything. Dad is going to get angry. Or my brother or my He's, my uncle is going to get angry and he's going to go mad. Hulk is going to come out. So I've got to be very careful. How many know we need to take control mentally? We need to be in control. God desires that we would have sound minds. Because if we don't have sound minds, we will make wrong decisions and wrong choices. We will say wrong things. We will do wrong things if we haven't got sound minds. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7 says, For as he thinks in his heart... So is he. We need right thinking. We need right thinking. Our thoughts need to be right. The way we think needs to be godly. It needs to be right. What's your thinking like this morning? 
have you had to catch up on yourself and say, hang on, what am I thinking? You know, we've been there. You have to think, well, hey, no, I can't be thinking like this. Because what happens is that, you know, if you haven't got a sound mind, you're going to do things that are wrong. God doesn't want you to lose it. He doesn't want you to go crazy and, you know, go mad as it were. The Bible says to, you know, be angry and sin not. So, you know, it's not that you can't be angry, but you've got to control yourself. I don't know if anyone have ever had to say to you, control yourself. What is wrong with you? And what happens is that we need to control our anger. It's not, you can be angry, but you don't have to sin. Things start coming out your mouth that you're like, you, you know, people look at you, I can't believe you, you know, you, you, man. Why? Because you're out of control. We need to be in control this morning. Take back control. Take back control. If you've lost control, we need to get back in control of the things of our lives. We need to have a transformed mind. Our mind needs to be transformed. Our mind, you know, as you know, our mind needs to be transformed when we come into a relationship with God, then our minds need to be transformed. It can't be the same. We can't act the same way. We can't, be, you know, behave the same way that we used to behave before we were saved. Our attitudes should change. Our uh, desires need to change. Why? Because we're new creatures. We're new men. We're not the same. We're different. God has changed us. If our minds are not Christ-like, then what happens is that we need to get close. God, I want to get close to you. I want to have the mind of God. I want to be able to think the way God would want me to think. We need to be able to, uh, you know, our lives need to have rules and we have to have some plans or else if we're just running wild, if everything, and there's no control as it were, we will do anything, we'll do crazy things if there is no control in our lives. You know, whether you are playing a game or whether you are driving a car or baking a cake, uh, you know, there are certain rules that you have to do or else for your safety and also for your success. If you're going to be successful, if you want to be successful, there are rules that are, you're going to have to follow to get that. You know, we can't just live uh, reckless lives not caring what we do or what we say or how we act. There needs to be rules in our lives. There needs to be some guidelines to follow. Thirdly, spiritually we need to take back control. We need to take back control spiritually. The, the word of God says in John chapter 10 and verse 10, the thief comes, the, the, the thief does not come except to steal and to kill and to destroy. I have come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly. Have you ever been stolen from? Someone has stolen things from you. Have you ever been robbed? You know, probably your car has been broken into. I remember as a young boy growing up, I was living with my sister and... Um, I remember them breaking into, we, we coming home, uh, this was in Jamaica, and uh, coming home, and, uh, and when we got home, uh, the house had been burgled. And, and you know, I, I was scared, I was, I was afraid, I didn't want to go in, I was thinking, is someone still in there? You know, I was afraid. And my sister grabbed hold of me, she was hugging me, she was crying, she was upset. And, uh, and we went in, and uh, there was things just all over the place. They had chucked everything all over. And they poured milk out of the fridge uh, onto everything. They, they just uh, wrecked the place. 
And we realized that her husband was a lawyer and, and it was probably a case that he had done and they, had, they were tracking her down. And, and one day she was just coming along and they stopped her, you know, two guys with a gun stopped her and said, you know, give us your bag, give us everything. He said, don't try hiding from us because we know you. And just being burgled, being robbed, is not, it's not nice just losing what you have. That someone breaks in to your house and take what belongs to you. You feel, you know, man, I'm, I, I haven't been in control. If I was there, you'd probably say, man, if I got a hold of them. <laughs> you're probably looking, you're probably walking down the road with a baseball bat. Where are they? Let me find them. <laughs> Take control, amen. <laughs> but what happened is that you feel violated, as it were, that someone would rob you of what you have. The enemy wants to steal our first love. Spiritually this morning, we need to understand that the enemy wants to steal our first love. And in stealing our first love, he, he's not going to stop us from going to church. He's not going to stop us from loving God. We'll still love God. I love God. We'll still come to church, but we'll lose the edge and the passion. We will lose the edge. We will lose the passion. And that's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to steal your first love. He wants to steal that passion, that desire that you have for God. Our gifts can lie dormant. Our gifts can lie dormant. You know, just like, man, I, I, I'm not singing. I don't want to sing. I don't want to praise the Lord. I don't want to do anything. But you know what? We need to take up the guitar once again. You need to start banging on that drum. You need to start, amen, testifying and telling people about the love of God. What happens is that the enemy wants you and I, wants to rob you of your first love. You know what it's like to be robbed. You feel, man, how could they take this from me? How could they take what I cherish, what I really love, what I want for my life? And what happens is that's exactly what the enemy wants to do to us. You need to take back control. See, what happens is that sometimes the enemy allows us to put a lid on the pressure cooker. I was thinking about this. I was thinking, you know, sometimes you're so excited for God. And, 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 and there are points in life where your, your steam, steam's coming out your ears, as it were. And what happens is that all of a sudden, you, you know what a pressure cooker is like? You put the lid on, and then it all is a... It's not the... You know, all the pressure is inside, and, and you want to get out, and you just can't get out. You're just like, the lid is on. Well, this morning, we need God to take the lid off, that we would, uh, you know, that we would be able to uh, let some steam off, amen, uh, and just allow the Holy Ghost to move freely in our lives. Let us take back control. We can't afford to compromise. Something that I know, amen, and we've realized throughout the scripture, there are many men of God that have compromised. And whenever you compromise, you lose. Compromising will always bring loss. Remember Samson, he compromised. And we know the results, uh, he lost. He lost his strength, but also he lost his life. We look at David. David, uh, you know, he compromised uh, with, uh, you know, Uriah's wife, as it were. And uh, he was, uh, he went, uh, he was in depression. He was like, God, forgive me. He was sorry and re repentant of all that he had done. And what happened is uh, he realized that he had lost out because of what he did. We look at Jonah. And Jonah, he compromised. And he lost. Judas compromised, and he lost. Esau compromised, and he lost. And throughout the word of God, there are many, many men 
who have compromised and they've lost. But thank God there are men that have not compromised and the blessing of God was upon their lives. We look at Noah, amen, he didn't compromise and God blessed him. God protected him and his family. We look at Job. Job didn't compromise, and God gave him a double portion, a triple portion of blessing upon his life. Because he didn't compromise. Daniel didn't compromise, and God blessed him. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they didn't compromise. And what happened was that God blessed them. Joseph didn't compromise, and God blessed him. This morning, we need to take back control of our lives. Proverbs 23, our text says, Whoever has no rule over his own spirit is like a city broken down without walls. If your walls are broken down this morning, we need to rebuild. We need to rebuild. Because if you don't rebuild, the enemy will come in. You you know, it's like your home just being no fence, no protection. You have no protection against what the enemy will do. But this morning, you and I need to take control. Take back control. At one time, we had control. We need to take it back. Amen. That's all I have for you this morning. Let's give God a clap offering. Amen. Let's give God praise as pastor comes. If you've been blessed or challenged by today's preaching and you'd like to get in touch with us, the easiest way is via our website at www.newharvestuk.com. You can email us at info at newharvestuk.com or look us up on Facebook or Twitter. You can call us on 0161 278 6305 or you can even write to us at 194 Chapel Street, Salford, Manchester, M3 6BY. We'd also like to extend a warm welcome for you to join us at any of our services. However you might be feeling and whatever you might have been told, know this. God loves you and there's a place for you in his kingdom. God bless you. We're praying for you. And once again, thank you for listening.